Is it really necessary to brew Coors Light down as low as 34 degrees? Do the mountains really need to turn blue when your beer's as cold as the Rockies? You be the judge. Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Chalk Talk this week features zero Husky plays and two Seahawk plays in what became a very compelling second half and some really good offense. And as a play, I'll draw next some struggling defense as well. Let's uh, let's look at the good first. This was Marshawn Lynch, one of the rare opportunities he got to, to have a seam and to have a hole to run through. If you remember the play, this is right after Leon Washington's punt return gets the ball to the 10-yard line. We're in the third quarter at this point. Seattle's down down 13 to Atlanta, 27 to 14. The ball is at the plus 10 going in. This is the first call out the gate. And there's a couple things I really like. And and remember as you're studying these plays and even in the even in, in through the game, always look at a couple things first and foremost. It's one of my first teaching points to people when they're learning the game. Always look first at personnel. That's going to tell you a little something about what's to come. In fact, it was the personnel that cost Pete Carroll two timeouts in the second half that became huge down the stretch. So the personnel that the Seahawks come out with is what's called a 12 personnel. One back, two tight ends. What's the obvious answer for Atlanta in that situation around the goal line? They're going to go regular people, and they're going to get into a formation then, secondly, in an alignment that you can predict a little bit. It was a bunch play that the Seahawks scored their second touchdown on. They come back to bunch knowing how Atlanta is going to line up. Bunch is one of those formations, and this is what bunch is. When you gather all those guys close, and in this case the two tight ends, you get a pretty good feel for how a defense is going to respond. It was bunch that was the touchdown pass that Jackson hit earlier in the game. And remember when we drew the Husky play early this season, it was a bunch play against Eastern. And what did I say? Well, typically defenses like to go four on three. They like that box alignment. It's a way for them to pass off some of the route concepts. So it's a good way when you have four on three to create some positive numbers if you're going to run the ball the other way, which is exactly what the Hawks do. So personnel is a key, how that defense aligns to it is a key, and they obviously wanted to come back to that play knowing how Atlanta would line up and then execute a run call. So this was, however you're going to call it, 37, typically we would call this in the West Coast system, th something like 37 counter H. And what that H is, is it's telling Zach Miller in this case that he's involved in the counter action, meaning he's going to pull, and that's exactly what he did. There are four stars on this run play. That's also what you're going to find, the difference between the pro and the college game. If you're going to execute a run play in the NFL, you got to have four people, in this case, executing at a really high level. You can't get away with one guy or two guys and a running back breaking four tackles. That doesn't happen. You need everybody to execute, and they did. One of the big stars on this play that's going to go unnoticed is the new left guard. What he was able to do, McQuiston, I believe, pronunciation, something like that, and I apologize to the big redhead, he's got the one-on-one -on -one block. Okay, everybody else has pretty good leverage. Okay, but big boy here had to handle the tackle one-on-one, -on -one, and the whole key to this play when you run a counter is you've got to avoid penetration. What kills a counter play in a pulling guard and a pulling H-back is penetration, and our boy here at left guard held the point. That's first and foremost. Secondly, everybody else who has... Leverage has got to get their block. Easy block for Russell Okung. He bypasses the weak backer. He comes all the way down. That That is, you couldn't ask for more. That's like a blindside shot that Okung does. He handles his business. Okay, Max Unger, likewise. This tackles in the opposite gap. He has a chance to wash him down. He takes care of business. Uh, the tackle, James Carpenter, he washes down and blocks the end. All these guys have leverage. These two just find a way to wash out some of that four on three. And really this becomes, as I said, Homeboy at left guard, big block. Okay, right guard Moffitt has to come around and does a great job staying tight, and he cleans up the end. And Zach Miller, as we've seen a bunch this year, comes through on the weak side linebacker and nails it. Star, star, star. And then finally, poor Mike Williams knocked himself out of the game. He comes down instead of blocking Buchanan, the, uh, the cornerback, he says, no, 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 this guy doesn't want to tackle. This is the tackler, and he lays his 265, 250 right into the free safety, the most critical block to knock him out of the play. Marshawn Lynch runs the counter action, and it's him in the corner, and you want to see an embarrassment? It's not Buchanan, pardon me. That's Dante Robinson. 
Watch Robinson fall on his face. He wanted no part of beast mode. That's why you go get the safety who's, who's getting paid to tackle, and that's why you leave him who's getting paid to cover. Try to tackle Beast Quake. Well executed, well done. Way to sacrifice Mike Williams for the team.